In a previous episode, I showed you my light following robot that I made using a solar car. I basically removed the solar cell and put an LDR with a competitor made with an operational amplifier. That was a proof of concept and a fun weekend project more than anything because as I mentioned, I ran into a few problems. To start with, the operational amplifier I used is none other than the now 50 plus years old 741. I think this is the first IC I've ever used. It's either this one or the 555 timer, but I think it's this one. Anyway, this IC has been in the market for over 50 years and it doesn't work like a modern rail-to-rail -rail operational amplifier. When the negative input is less than the positive input, it doesn't go down to zero volts. I had to add a resistor between the base of the transistor that switches the DC motor on and off and ground to force less than 0.7 volts at the base. Otherwise, the DC motor would have only two states, go and go faster, as opposed to, you know, go and not go. Another problem I had, although of course this one was pretty much foreseeable, is that the robot has only one motor and therefore it can't turn right or left. Well, I decided to make another light following robot from scratch that can turn right and left, and here it is. This time I used the most modern LN358 operational amplifier. This amplifier will output either 5 volts or 0 volts when configured as a competitor, which allows me to do without the extra resistor, and most importantly, it has two competitors inside one IC. The LN358 is an 8-pin IC, just like the 741, but the 741 only has one competitor. In fact, when I was little, I always thought it was weird that the 741 had three unused pins that could be used for an extra competitor. So the LM358 is in a way what I wanted the 741 to be when I was little. Let's take a tour of the robot. Here we have the left LDR, which makes the right motor run, and the right LDR, which makes the left motor run. The LM358 compares the voltage between each LDR and its corresponding reference resistor, and the voltage resulting of these two pots. This is a 555 timer that serves as a clock for this 4017 decade counter, which turns on these LEDs whenever the opposite motor is running. The LEDs are connected to ground through a regular VC547 transistor that turns on and off depending on what the opposite motor is doing. Here is a more detailed picture of the robot. These are the two sensors made with an LDR, a 10K pot, and a 1K resistor. This is the LM358, these are the transistors that turn the motors on and off, and the motors are under the board. Finally, this is the 555 timer and the 4017 decade counter that turns on the turn signals. You might be wondering how I made this. Well, when I want to build a circuit, I never draw the schematic diagram on a paper or a circuit design program. I just take a breadboard and build whatever I have in mind. I have this breadboard glued on a piece of wood that has two motors and two wheels, and I use to design robots. This way I can tell whether whatever I want to do will work before soldering. Once the prototype is 100% working, then I design the tracks on graph paper before soldering everything on a perforated board. Here are the LDRs and the pods, the LM358, the 555 timer, and the 4017 decade counter, and the two transistors. Once I know where everything is going to be on the board, I design the tracks. What you see on the notebook are the tracks seen from above. That means that what I solder is a mirror image of this. It might seem confusing, but I have done hundreds of circuits like this, so I'm pretty good at it. I can even do it while watching TV and still get it right despite the fact that everything is mirrored. Now we're going to see a little demonstration of what the robot does. And now we're going to see a demonstration out on the range.
All right, that's all. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, bye.